For the past three days, ECOWAS defense chiefs have been hunkered down in Accra, the Ghanaian capital, deliberating on a potential military intervention in the Niger Republic, where the post-president Mohamed Bazoum remains in the custody of a group of soldiers who seized the reins of government about three weeks ago. Well, we are now being joined by a research fellow at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Dr. Kesta Ono, to look at decisions reached at that summit. Well, many thanks so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you for having me. So what are your expectations at the end of these deliberations taking place in Accra, Ghana? Well, I thank you very much. My expectations are that uh, diplomatic, uh, diplomatic options should be fully explored. Even though that uh, the president and the chairman of the ECOWAS head of states has equally reiterated that everything is on the table. But as we all know, the first move, you know, asking the Senate for the approval of the deployment of troops, the Senate has turned it down. Considering the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended 1999, you know, it's spelled out in a section 5, subsection 4, that the president shall not declare a state of war, you know, except with the sanction of the both houses of assembly. And uh, even uh, subse that is subsection, uh, subsection 5 said that, uh, well, that in consultation with the National Defense Council, that the president can deploy troops, you know, if Nigerian national interest is under threat. But at least as things are unfolding now, I believe that uh, the diplomatic efforts are ongoing. So I believe that by the end of the day, this issue should be resolved. And um, do you think that a case could be made in a wider sense that uh, Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria might be uh, under some sort of threat in the case of the fact that there's a large amount of insecurity in the country and Niger might have a spillover effect due to that? Well, there are many reasons. If we want to look at it, you know, why Nigeria, ECOWAS, you know, are interested in the happenings in Niger Republic. You want to, if we look at our relationship with Niger Republic, there are a lot of cross-cutting uh, cross and crisscrossing cleavages. We look at the cultural affinity between the North and the Nigerian. We look at the religious affinity. Then we look at uh, our relationship, which dates back even before the period of independence. So we have a lot of things in common. And then if we want to take it to the economic level you know we have uh, the gas pipeline that move from a delta state you know moving through niger going to algeria that stand about 13 billion dollars you know and is going to algeria from there to morocco then if the, it will join the mediterranean gas pipeline that, that will supply a cheaper gas to europe so if you look at the things that are stake that are quite enormous and then again we have a uh, of course, the issue of uranium, you know, that uh, Niger, you know, is producing a commercial quantity and are supplying both to France, to Europe, and to America. And if you look at another country that supplies even uranium to the world, you look at uh, Kazakhstan, but their uranium will equally pass through Russia. And then you look at Russia, and it may equally, you know, it's baffling to even understand that in spite of the imposition of various sanctions to the Russian government, that of uranium has not been sanctioned. So even Russia is still trading on uranium to the West. So look at it. In fact, the major challenge is that if we allow this war to go on, you know, uh, it may, we are now going back to the Cold War days. We are West Africa and the Sahel region will be used as a proxy between the superpowers and it will create serious crisis of uh, insecurity. So does that, lead, um, does that lend credence you know, to the belief in Niger you know, that ECOWAS has been manipulated by foreign powers, especially France and the United States? Well, I don't want to use the word manipulation. If you look at uh, maybe ECOWAS Protocol 2001, Article 1 on uh, uh, democracy and good government, it spells out that the military shall be apolitical and the military shall be, in, that is, shall be under the command of a democratically elected government. You know, nobody is supporting the coup in Niger. However, I believe that it should be resolved, you know, diplomatically. Again, if we look at other things, 
you can see that there is a high level of resentment, you know, among uh, Francophone Africans against France. You understand? Because uh, maybe some of the pact, or maybe pact towards the uh, continuation of colonialism that they signed with their Francophone country. You know, if we look at maybe that pact is not actually, the, you know, the young generation are coming up and are now saying no, that we are resisting it, we want to have our full political independence. So I don't want to say that at the West are pressurizing maybe ECOWAS to go to war. You understand? ECOWAS are equally, they are not comfortable with the presence or the growing presence of military junta in the West Africa. You know, they want democracy to be entrenched. But you know, the masses are still crying that the dividend of democracy, we have not seen it. So I think this matter should be resolved diplomatically. Then considering the, inter considering the Wagner group, the Russian-funded Wagner group that had been invited by the military junta in Mali, in Mali, both in Mali, in Burkina Faso, and now in Niger, you know? So it's obvious that maybe an act of war may fuel, you know, rivalry between the West and the Russia. And then Africa will be at the receiving end. Because once they create crisis of insecurity in this region, you know, they will be busy mining our resources illegally. Because some of these machinery that are coming into uh, uh, in the Sahara region, you know, their motive is actually profit-oriented. And again, just a few days ago, there was a report that the, that is the swap are now moving, both from, uh, that is from Niger, they are now coming closer to Nigerian border. And if we consider the terrorist activity in the north, in the northeast, then the activities of the bandits and even the illegal mining that is taking place there, then with the involvement of all this ISWAP and Al Qaeda and the migrant, it will create serious challenge for Nigeria. And once they come in, it will actually destabilize not just the northern Nigeria, but the entire Nigeria, as we are seeing the high level of insecurity just now. Thank you. As we're even seeing from the map that is up on the screen, it's the entire uh, left to right, east, east to west of um, West Africa. That entire block is very volatile right now, and we are bang smack in the middle of that. But I want to talk about President Bazoum. Um, we know that uh, they are going to be trying him for high treason. There have also been reports of his... Uh, health conditions, and the conditions under which him and his family are under house arrest. What do you think uh, will become of him in the next couple of days? It doesn't seem like they will be releasing him um, anytime soon, or will they? Even well, with these charges, because now he's been charged, you can release him, right? You would assume, one would assume. Well, if, uh, if we look at the way things are going, just like as I said earlier, I believe that uh, through diplomatic processes, all these issues can be resolved. You know, initially the junta we are not, uh, you know, they were not receptive. They were not receptive. You know, even all the sanctions and uh, threats, we, we, because we, we, you know, the ECOWAS are using both carrots and stick. You know, the threat given to them, you saw the way. You know that uh, they just went ahead and appointed about 21 ministers. You understand? And when you see them acting with impunity like this, it's obvious that uh, there are some powers backing them, you know? So when you are fighting them, it's not just a cause going to maybe war against Niger to restore the democratically elected government. You know, there may be some powers, and these are actually our fears, you know? If you consider the number of their troops, they have about 25,000 standing army. And Nigeria alone, we have more than 400,000 standing army. So there are no match. And if you look at even the Lores and the, the gallantry efforts that the Nigerian army has made all over the world, it's obvious that maybe going to Niger is not a problem. But, but we have to... But the insurgency that we are fighting at home right now, would it be wise that is you know, what I'm, to no, actually go to war no, I'm not saying go, no, I said that we should explore every diplomatic option because going to war now, it's not even our own internal security issues. You have to take it into perspective. You have insurgency in the Northeast. You have banditry in the Northwest. You have uh, militancy in the South South. And then you have separatist movement in the Southeast. You know, when you look at all these, all these things, you have to consider it. That even if you look like 
Some people from the north are even saying that even going to war against Niger means going to war against the north. So we have to put all these things into pers perspectives and trade carefully. And we know that uh, President Tinubu is at the helm of uh, ECOWAS right now. And um, Nigeria is being seen as the big brother in this situation. I want to uh, explore what the possibility of um, not, of, okay, if they do move in and this war happens, what are the uh, implications for not only Nigeria, but uh, Nigerian citizens? Well, let me say this. You know that uh, if you look at what is happening that is in Europe right now, considering the Russia, Russian invasion of Ukraine, and you discover the challenges they're having with NATO. You know, uh, I believe that Europe, they don't want to go to war on a European ground because NATO can as well challenge Russia. But it will have, you know, it will end in catastrophe because it will undermine the economy of Europe. And uh, you see all of them coming to West Africa. I believe that we as West Africans shouldn't give them that opportunity to use our ground as a proxy war. You know, because if they use our ground as a proxy war, they will create a whole quagmire of insecurity in this region. And it's an evil wind that blows no one any good, especially from us. You know, I believe that it's time for Nigeria to, you know, call other West African country as a leader. And we see how we can resolve these things amicably. We have African ways or maybe alternative, alternative uh, dispute uh, resolution process, just like... Uh, uh, His Eminence, uh, Sanusi, the former Emir of Kanu, went to, you know, Niger, and they had a breakthrough, you know. I expect that a further consultation, you know, should continue, considering the fact that even the Lamas has equally gone there. So when you look at the affinity between Nigeria and Niger, you know, I think that we have many ways of resolving these things, especially now that the junta there are willing to talk. They say yes, that they are willing to negotiate. So I believe that uh, both ECOWAS and Nigerian government should explore every diplomatic option. Well, two questions in one before we wrap up. What role should the African Union be playing in this? Is this purely an ECOWAS affair? Then number two, you know, there's this school of thoughts that believes it is only a domestic rebellion and probably a civil war right now at this moment that can overthrow the junta. What, what are your thoughts on those? Well, if we look at previous cues, because we are talking about Niger queue as if it's the only queue that has taken place. You know, in West Africa, in 2020, there was a queue in Mali. You know, in 2021, uh, you, uh, you have that of Guinea, and they have about two queues in Burkina Faso. You know? And these uh, Q plotters or the juntas, we are sanctions they were threatened. And I believe that they've given them timeline for them to restore. Or maybe a timeline for them to transit, you know, and they play and put a democratic uh, government in place. You know, uh, I believe that uh, just like that process, you know, they should equally follow the Niger Q plotters, you know, diplomatically for them to restore democratic institutions. I know that, uh, yes, by the intrusion of the Wagner Group into the scenario, at least it has created a lot of panics. You understand? I believe that African Union, they have a role to play. One, they should start, because if we look at the private military companies that are operating in Sahel region, there are more than 50. You know, we have, uh, the, we have the sand line, then we have uh, the black water, we have those from South Africa, we have those from UK. We have those from America. We even have those from France. And we have those from Germany operating in the whole area of Sahel region. You know, and their activities. Because when you look at who, who are those inviting them, these private military companies are invited both by state actors and non-state actors. At times, you see transnational corporations bringing them in to self-guide their resources. And you see them acting with impunity and reckless abandonment, committing, uh, violating human rights. You know, I believe, and there is, all, there is also, I think there is a, a resolution in place to checkmate the activities, but these resolutions are not being followed. So I believe that African Union will start by maybe banishing these uh, private military companies uh, in Africa. You understand? Because they are causing a lot of commotion here and there. At times, you even see them involving in QD attacks. So if they are banished or we, they will now outline their modus operandi and checkmate the activities, it will actually help maybe Africa to be peaceful and for them to grow. 
Well, we wait till about 4 p.m. after the meeting uh, with the ECOWAS uh, uh, heads and uh, individuals in Accra, Ghana, and we're hoping for a positive outcome, whatever that might be. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Kester. Thank you very much for having me once again.